good afternoon, good evening, good morning, um, Pixel Chain fam. I'm here with the very talented Rob Levy. Um, he is a pixel artist, uh, animator, and filmmaker, and we're really happy to have you here. Thanks for coming. Thank you so much for having me. <laughs> of <Got> course. <laughs> um, so my first question for you is, um, can you tell us like, how you got into um, pixel art so deep? Like, what was the impetus for getting into this world? Yeah, so uh, pixel art specifically was uh, kind of just like a slow evolution. Uh, the Actually, we're looking at it, the kind of genesis of it. I got in my head that I uh, wanted to make a Star Wars film. And I mean, I've always been a geek. I've always been a Star Wars fan. So that's always been a dream. But I kind of just got the idea in my head of finally needing to make it happen. And uh, that's kind of just like a thing with me. Once it gets in my head, I can't really let go of it until it happens. Um, so I, I just started on this venture of, of how I can develop this Star Wars film. And, uh, and then I kind of just quickly got to animation and that would realistically be the only way I can try to fathom doing something like this affordably or on my own. And I'm, <clears throat> I'm not an, like an illustrator by any means and I've never been an illustrator. Uh, so... What do you mean? <laughs> like this is, <laughs> these are illustrations. <laughs> just Okay, cool. So, yeah. <laughs> I guess, yeah, maybe I'm, I'm speaking about prior to, uh, to, to jump into all this. Uh, I've never, I've, I've done stick figures. I did a lot of stick figures for like films and film school. I loved uh, storyboarding with awesome stick figures, but that was the extent. Uh, so, so yeah, and then, I mean, it was like kind of just a building process. Like I, I, I know initially when I, I kind of just thought like pixel art was kind of just the most doable. It, it seemed, uh, I guess, more like the, like the simplest form of animation and, and something that I was I guess instinctually familiar with just growing up on video games um and i i don't know i initially kind of was like i should find pixel artists and like i i wanted to direct it and i wanted to you know do everything else to bring this to life and i couldn't fathom also drawing everything from scratch and then i quickly realized there's no way i can afford to pay somebody for all the the stuff i would need to make this happen and i i started to learn how to how to draw from there um and, and yeah it, it was just it was probably like a year about of of drawing a lot of like of a lot of stuff for Hans or everything for Han Solo or sorry Han Solo is the Star Wars fan film that uh I ended up I'm, I'm making we currently have four episodes out of five out right now um Yes. But I, I was working on it for about a year, just not releasing anything publicly. I mean, I was super embarrassed. It was all very crude illustrations and character designs. Um, so, so yeah, it was definitely at least like a year before I even just started like posting anything and before we um, released anything. It was probably over a year. Um, but yeah, anyways, long story wow. short, <laughs> that's how I got into pixel art because of Star Wars and Han Solo and just wanting to make this fan film. Wait, so so it's only been a year since you started making pixel art ever? No, at like, this point, I, it was about a year until I released the first episode of Han Solo, which I, I believe was maybe two years ago. So I'd say closer to three years at this point. Wow. So, so basically, Star Wars is the reason that, well, making this Star Wars movie is the reason that you were like, okay, this is the this is the medium that I could use to make a movie about Star Wars. And then from there, you were just inspired to, oh my God, these chibi pixel ones are so <laughs> cute. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, um, so that was that was the impetus with Star Wars. And so for three years, you've been creating pixel art. Wow. So I now, I, I mean, I, I still don't understand why you were like, I'm not an illustrator, but because you're doing it but um just the fact that it was three years and that the impetus was because you wanted to make a movie is really cool um about star wars and now it's like it seems like this is probably your life now just just by virtue of the fact of how long it takes to um create pixel art and animate things <laughs> I, it, it is absolutely it has been my life for I've been, you know, the three years or however long i've, do, I've been doing it it's i mean it, it has taken over my life for better or worse. It, it's been something that, I mean, like 
the reason I got into filmmaking, I feel like in general is, is because of, of how difficult it was. And that always appealed to me. Um, I, I came from, uh, like a sports background. So I have like a competitive thing in me. And when I discovered the film world, I kind of realized quickly that like, I'm never going to be able to master this. Like, this is something that like, you can always just keep learning and, you know, doing more with and yeah, I definitely, I feel like I, I just took that into, into this and that's just something that, uh, yeah, that uh, just inspires me, you know? Yeah. It's just, looks like you've been doing specifically pixel animation for a long time. Um, what were you doing, uh, before you had this idea for, um, the star Wars, uh, series? Uh, I was doing a lot of like comedy sketches. I, uh, and this was before the coronavirus when people were still able to interact normally. So, uh, I had a lot of actor friends and, uh, and so at the time I was doing a lot of, com uh, filming and directing a lot of comedy sketches with them, uh, making short films also on the side and, and really just trying to, to stay creative while, uh, while freelancing, uh, as a cinematographer, a editor, producer anything I can any gig that I can find that a paid and was somewhat fulfilling for my soul it was like as long as there was a little piece of both I would I'd fall into it um one really cool project that that I definitely just enjoy looking back on uh I worked for about a year with a uh, a neuroscientist uh just a, like a brain doctor um who worked with kids with special or works with children with special needs um, and his practice is, is like through not medication. It's just trying to, you know, help balance the brain essentially is, is the theory. And we did a reality educational TV show that like worked with families that had kids with special needs. And we got to go in, in the homes and just really just work with families. And it was a cool experience getting to develop a show like that. And, uh, and it was also just amazing just getting to be there. Um, for that. So I, I, I definitely really appreciated my, my time just bouncing around as a filmmaker and, and just gravitating to whatever, you know, I found that was inspiring. And yeah, then, the, the pixel art definitely seemed to work out when the coronavirus hit and it was like, this is the way to make movies or that I can keep making art, not, not movies specifically, art, whatever it may be. Yeah. So is this like now your, your primary, um, like work is, is doing pixel art and, and this series now? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I still have a full-time job, so I'm, I'm not fully supportive as a, as a independent artist. Um, but any, any free second I get goes into the pixel world. Um, yeah, I don't know if, if the coronavirus wasn't a thing and if I would be still balancing, maybe doing some kind of uh live action projects but uh I'm, I'm super happy like just being in the world and just seeing just what else i can do with pixel stuff because I, I definitely i mean i feel like i've only scratched the surface as far as how to kind of keep blending the two mediums of like just you know 2d pixel art and like this 3d compositing and kind of more uh, modern techniques and stuff like that yeah it's cool the style like really lends itself to um you know the, the like mini series look and feel too and um well i guess it's not really a mini series it's been going on for a year now but um that's really cool that uh you're not the only artist who's said that um you know it's it's messed up but due to coronavirus and like the environment that it's created it's somehow it's magically given you some more time to focus on um what you really care about and what you're passionate about um, so it's really cool that this is what came out of it, um, for you. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Oh. And I, it, I definitely feel fortunate just being able to just dig inside my head. I know I, I have friends that don't make art that are like trying to find ways to stay busy. And yeah, if I didn't have this, I would, I would be going crazy for sure. <laughs> yeah. And, um, I'm thinking of a couple of things at once that you just said, but uh, you were like, oh, like I'm not really fully supporting myself yet um, with this, but, you know, and, and for anyone who doesn't know Rob's work yet, um, he is new to the crypto art space. Um, so, you know, 
you will see as you get more into it, there's a lot of people who um, have had these success stories where um, due, due to sale of their NFTs and their art, um, they're able to sustain um, you know, a life where that's what their work is now, is just whatever whatever their passion projects are, is you know, they're making money off of NFTs um, and collaboration projects and anything you can think of. Um, so maybe that'll happen for you. Um, I don't see why not. <laughs> like, and you know, things move really fast in the crypto art world, like just a couple of months. Uh, there are people who've only been in this space for a few months and they're get, getting sales on their work that is like more than people who've been in the, who've been in the traditional art world for like 15 or 20 years. So, hey. so maybe. Never <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, I've never like thought of myself as a, 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 a fine artist or like even I guess I never really looked at these as like I, I thought they were really cool things that I was making and that I always like put my all into and just tried to make cool stuff. But the, once I learned about this whole NFT space, it, it blew my mind and just made me like really evaluate myself as an artist and, and what I've been making and just like, I guess seeing just seeing things in a different way, you know? Yeah, and I'm actually looking at this um, Instagram post. Is this, uh, this was actually done for like Travis Barker and Youngblood, like Travis Barker from Blink-182? No, no, I definitely don't want to make it seem like I did. <laughs> I did <laughs> just, just as like a fan for fun. On my oh, page, okay. <laughs> there's a mix of stuff that I've done for like official artists and stuff that I've done more for fans. Um, I've done, or not more for fans, as a fan. Uh, I did a music video for Less Than Jake uh, last year, and that that was with Less Than Jake. So if I love that. There, um, that that's real. <laughs> uh, I did another a music video with the band Arrows in Action. Uh, that they're an incredible band, and I was really proud of that music video. Um, so those are official collaborations. Uh, and and then yeah, there, there's a bunch of stuff up there. But uh, de didn't want to make it seem like I, I worked with Travis Barker yet. <laughs> oh, I, I was like, I mean, it looks like they could have totally used that. Like, I'm sure if they like wanted to pay you for it, they would. <laughs> like, if they saw that, they'd be like, oh shit, that's amazing. <laughs> um, that's so funny. Our one of our uh, Pixel Chain co-founders says he loves less than Jake too, as do I. Yeah, yeah. They had they were a huge part of my, my growing up, and it was yeah very hard for me not to geek out. It, it wasn't until like after the project was complete and they released that new album when I sent them an email like, guys, you I've loved you my whole life. No big deal. That's cool. <laughs> no big deal. You got me through my preteen and teenage years. Nothing too crazy. Yeah. You know, <laughs> so many house parties, just jamming to your songs, but cool. <laughs> That's so cool. What was it like working with them? Like, what was the creative process like? Uh, it was, it was, uh, it was, I mean, it was interesting. Every, every creative process is different. Um, and especially cause like I went from working with this band arrows in action right into this. So it was like, I went from working with one group of people to a completely different group of people and they're both bands and we're all artists, but everybody's different. So it's like, you know, it's just every experience is different. Um, but they were, they were super cool. They were very like to the point, like they, they didn't, uh, where I feel like some, sometimes we can get lost in like a creative cloud of like, we don't know what's going on. Um, they, they were always very clear on when I brought them ideas or if they had ideas on, on how we can actually make them happen. Um, so that, that, that was a huge relief. Um, and yeah, I mean, just again, to geek out, uh, you know, the first, uh, video call we had, we, we were just chopping up, up ideas and, and that was just, you know, super surreal and just really cool to be uh to be coming up with these these crazy pixel ideas that i had in my head and, and you know artists that again i've been looking up to forever to be digging the ideas and building on them and being like all right we're we're doing this um but and, and I, did, I don't want to make it sound like it was all easy either like it, this conceptually took a lot uh maybe like a good month month and a half for uh for me to kind of wrap my head around like how we can do this zelda-esque music video but uh, make it original enough or, or bring enough flair to it so it's not like a complete copy or anything um right but, but once once the idea clicked and and I, I started making the assets like making their character models like they were just geeking out the whole time and it was just like it was so fun just unraveling the whole thing 
Yeah, I'm just looking at it right now. This isn't the whole video here on, on Instagram, right? No, you have you a on link? YouTube. Yeah, the, the Is it on your Inside the Box or on their YouTube? It's on their YouTube, but if it's on my Inside the Box also. I, I have a little like oh, sweet. Uh, a little link to it on my, my Yeah, page. yeah. Yeah, Leandra said, oh, I'd like to see that. So I'll show that while we're talking. That's awesome to have a, a client like that that actually like knows what they want. <laughs> when it's it comes so to <laughs> yeah 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 and, and the music i worked on before uh this lesson jay went with arrows in action like they were also another one where like our collaborative process was incredibly fluid and just like a dream i got extremely lucky these last two projects for sure yeah totally oops let's see if the sound will work when i play it can you guys hear that? I can. Yeah? Okay. I, I can, but if people can. Oh my god, I love ska. <laughs> <laughs> I'll turn the music off in a second. We'll just like have it in the background because that's like three minutes. But yeah. This just like makes me smile to look at. <laughs> yeah. It's much cooler when the whole band comes together and, and you get to see uh the whole less than Jake as a pixel fan. <laughs> cool. I'm gonna let that play in the background while we finish, while we keep going. Um, so that's fun. Did, so when you got to tell them like, oh, I really been like, you're, you're like a special band to me. Did they have anything to say about that? Or like, what were they like? Oh no, I totally, I did not share that until the very end. And it was, <laughs> it was in an email to the one, uh, con like, I, you know, I had met with the whole band throughout uh throughout the process but i was really in contact with one one of the guys um so it was really him that uh at the end i just sent an email like i'm a geek this is real <laughs> thank you so much that's really cool um uh so what is what is it like um working uh with a team to create like like what are the logistics of um getting the Star Wars, uh, the Han Solo series um, during this pandemic? How has that been? Uh, so, it, I mean, it hasn't changed much, honestly, uh, since pre-pandemic. If we were starting it, it would have it would have presented, a, if we were starting it uh, during the pandemic, it would have presented a lot of issues. But I uh, luckily, I had done all of the voice recordings for all the actors for all the episodes in the beginning before I started animating anything. So I've had that, I've had their their voices recorded for, for a couple of years now. Um, and thank you everybody, you guys are all amazing. And sorry, it's taking so long, it's coming. Um, and we're <laughs> almost done. Uh, but yeah, so that fortunately wasn't pandemic times and I, I have a little setup here and I was able to just have the actors come here and, and do the, the voice recordings and I was able to direct them through that and, and do the recordings myself. Um, so that was, that was really awesome um, because I have had to do some pickups since and getting stuff remotely, it, it works, but it, it uh, just imagining if I had to do five episodes worth of recordings like that, it, it would have been, it would have been wild. Um, but uh, I, I also, I definitely want to, to shout out my, my buddy, Oliver, who's been co-producing this entire project with me. And he, uh, he, he's basically just like my second man and uh, just any, ev any and everything he's been helping out with um, other than like the actual, like physically drawing things um, or, or animating. It's more, he's, he's like my lore guy, my story guy, my just, he's, yeah, uh, he's every, everything else uh, that you don't see. Uh, and uh, and yeah, and other than him, we have our uh, our sound uh, our sound guy who does all the arranging of the music, and he does the sound effects, and he's doing an incredible job. His name's Julian Crowhurst, um, and he's been on board since since the first episode. I actually worked with him previously. The first time I worked with him, he, he composed music for my feature film, which was my senior year back in film school. Uh, so we've been working together for a while, uh, and and we're it's it's really just us three. So it's. The team is me drawing everything and animating all the puppets, doing all the lip syncing, um, then and bringing it into After Effects, building the environments, blocking the scenes, and uh, and yeah, and then sending it off to Julian when that's all ready. He does the sound work, 
and that's that's the process wow so you're doing a lot you're doing basically all the animation and um then he takes it and as as the sound and so it's really the three of you or two of you sorry yeah, yeah it's basically the three of us uh I, i'm you know putting the pen to paper wild. oliver's helping me conceptualize and keep my head on a track and uh and julian's doing all the all the sound work that's super cool um I have a question from Nightmare. He was asking, any plans to cover more of the Star Wars extended universe outside of the mainstream vehicles like Raven, Ezra, Cal, et cetera? Yeah, I, we, we've definitely, uh, I mean, I, I would love to do as much Star Wars content as possible. Um, it's just like this stuff takes so long and, and yeah, that, that's, really, that's really the issue. It's just like, if I had all the time in the world, I would dig into so much lore. Um, but right now it's like, I, I wanna finish you know, Han Solo and uh, and then got to decide if I want to spend the next two years digging into another Star Wars project or uh, or, or what I'm going to do. But if, if Disney wants to call me and, and do anything official and I can I can make this an actual job, then I am more than happy to, to make Star Wars my life. I mean, this is Star Wars is what inspired me. And I mean, it's actually also just notably it was like super uh super cool to see the uh the picture that you guys chose for like the little promo thing was luke skywalker like the, the luke skywalker uh pixel thing that i did and i mean like i i had that toy as a kid and like those were like that that's where my filmmaking started just like playing with those toys and it's just like just seeing that and like that being a part of like this interview and i was just like this is all it's all just like full circle and like star wars has been there the whole time um so i whether it's next year two years whether disney calls me or doesn't call me like there will be <laughs> more star wars in my future for sure yeah. Sorry, that that's awesome but. no we love long answers um because then that means that you uh you know, the question made you uh, excited. So, <laughs> um, and uh, like follow up to that question from Lang, they asked, uh, have you thought about building your own universe to expand on? Yeah, I mean, I'm curious if if, uh, if they meant uh, like a kind of branch of the Star Wars universe or, or my own universe. Uh, more yeah. More thought has been put into making my own universe, uh, for sure. It's. It, it, that that's the dream um definitely creating creating a world and uh yeah and creating my own kind of universe that 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 is the ultimate dream for sure yeah totally and um i mean it sounds like you have a good team of people who uh, believe in what you do so whenever you're ready to do it it should be you know a no-brainer <laughs> yeah um yeah. Yeah, I definitely have some amazing, amazing people behind me, and I, yeah, emotionally wouldn't be able to handle uh, handle being an artist without without some really awesome friends and my family. Yeah, totally. It actually brings me to my next question. What would you say has been the most challenging thing um, as an artist and uh, as a pixel artist, uh, animator? Most challenging thing. Uh, I feel like for me, it was really kind of, uh, I guess, like finding my place and, and figuring out if if I had if I had a place in, in this space, like I, I, I got into pixel art very, uh, it, it just like it was all so fast, like I was saying, like from the Han Solo thing. And like, I watched more tutorials on illustration than I did on pixel art. So I, I was I was more curious in and again, just drawing and just how to, you know, how to just, yeah, illustrate in general. And, and I think that I also was kind of conscious of not of like, if I learned or if I looked at too many like pixel art tutorials, then I would, I'd fall into looking like so many other pixel art. Uh, so I really didn't look at anything uh, pixel wise when I was like first starting off Han Solo. I mean, the, the main thing I remember watching other than just the Star Wars series on repeat, um, like every every movie just on repeat um i watched a lot of jim, jim lee i don't know if he still does it jim lee's a, uh, an amazing comic book artist and he he used to do a lot of live streams and he would just draw and talk while he was drawing and like 
it, a, it was amazing watching him draw and like seeing that, but it was also so freeing of just like he was erasing. He was he was just messing up, and I was just like, this guy who's absolutely incredible is just is just having fun and just like there, there's no wrong answer here. And and watching watching those videos really definitely like helped me kind of just get into that space of like I'm not going to try to you know imitate anything else. I don't really want to look at anything else. I kind of want to just learn how to how to draw just aesthetically so i can figure out how to you know make depth how to make things look certain ways but that was really it so and, and then i think uh to circle back to the original question when i started like releasing the pixel art i started noticing how weird it was and how different it was from everything else and and that was something that like i was, I was super self-conscious of where i remember like i put something out where i had uh rotated a head in in after effects because like a lot of the stuff i draw in photoshop and then i bring into after effects to edit uh or to animate and i, I had this head rotated and i posted on a reddit and somebody commented like pixels don't rotate and i was like they don't you're right but mine <laughs> did somehow <laughs> so it's so funny yeah and so like, what do you mean pixels don't rotate I do what i want it's art <laughs> right and and like I, now i feel much better looking back and, and saying like yeah like i'm i'm different i was doing whatever but like at the time like that crushed me and i was like whoa am i am i breaking rules like are there rules like are these are these this is a community that like i'm hoping to get involved in that is is telling me what i should be doing kind of thing um so that was like i feel like all all of all of that um and just realizing and coming to terms with like it's okay making weird pixel art um what was my biggest challenge in all this aside from all the technical stuff i mean we could talk about that for days it was extremely te technically challenging lip syncing is a lot of fun i can um, imagine <laughs> <laughs> yeah so and pixel art by itself, static pixel art and making even just gifts of it is incredibly long process. So <laughs> like yeah. kudos for having the patience to build this. I mean, the the finished product is really awesome. I mean, Decryptolorian and said, um, so amazing. Leandro said, I love it in all caps. And um, your friend Ben, Benjamin, I love that name, Benjamin, <laughs> Benjamin said, I've known Rob since we were teenagers. He has one of the biggest hearts of anyone I know and his passion is extraordinary. And I would say that totally comes through. Um, you know, I'm just like watching the video in the background while we talk and it's just the details and like the depth uh, of field that's created. And um, it's, it's a different way, like, from what I've seen, I think it's a different way of looking at pixel art animation too. It's, it's, um, I, I can't articulate it cause I'm like not a, a filmmaker, but um, just to my untrained eye, there's just something more going on um, with your style here. And um, it's exciting to see. Yeah. Oh, cool. Yeah. yeah. I mean, yeah, I, I mean, I think, uh, I, or maybe I'm wrong, but I, I feel like what, I, I think stands out is, is that I I come from a filmmaking background and like a lot, a lot of just the way I, I see the world and I frame things like it's it 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 comes from my cinematic training and uh, and in obviously this this stuff's all on YouTube it's all it's all two D you're not seeing it with, with three D glasses but it's all built in a three D space as opposed to other Wait. facial animations. I'm Wait, sorry. pause, you can put, no, I'm sorry to interrupt you, but you can put 3D glasses on and this has like 3D effects to it, you're no, saying? No, oh, no, I was, oh. I was, I was like, like, what? <laughs> sorry, one day. You're doing too one much day. already. That would be, that'd be incredible. Um, but no, but I was just saying that, that just the fact that it's built in the 3D space and I was, I'm able to give it the depth of field and, and shoot this with a 3D camera as opposed to trying to animate on a 2D plane, uh, I, I think that gives it just a different feel uh, in itself, I think. <laughs> yeah, I, I wasn't sure like why it looks, had this like depth to it. Now that makes sense to me. Yeah, no, um, it's all a digital camera. I'm able to like choose what lens I want. So like, it was just, it was so freeing. And like, I just geeked out so hard when I realized I can just shoot anything, anywhere. I can put a camera and like, I, yeah, any lens I wanted, anything I wanted, like the stuff that 
coming from a film world, if I wanted to change lenses, if I wanted to put a camera up, in, you know, up in the air, it's like everything is money, everything's time, everything is, everything's everything. And in animation, it's just up to your imagination. And my imagination's pretty crazy, and uh, <laughs> it's been fun. I mean. Yeah, sorry. I'm just like, I'm distracted by like listening to you and watching the video at the same time and just like seeing everything that's going on. And it's, um, yeah, I mean, I'm just impressed. So when is the, um, you said there's one more episode in the series? Yeah, we just have the, the finale. The finale is left. And uh, yeah, we're, I, I, I'm a, a good amount through it. I don't want to say like halfway through, but I, I've, I've done a good amount of the animation. Um, and, and I w would probably be a little further along if this, uh, NFT wave didn't, uh, didn't hit my head where, um, yeah, I definitely, I feel like I got sidetracked over the last couple of weeks and, and wanted to try to just dig into this space. Um, but I'm, I'm, the plan is to release the fifth episode, uh, in, in this year for sure. I'm hoping by the summer, uh, and, and yeah, put a bow, put a bow on this series. <laughs> last summer is pretty, it'll be here before we know it. For sure. Yeah, um, for sure. Yeah. And um, do you have a specific plan for the next project after the Star Wars series is done? Specific? Definitely not. We're I'm definitely like in the in the brainstorming phase. Me and my, uh, my buddy Oliver, we're, we've been kicking around ideas for a while. Um, the, the one that I'm kind of leaning towards is is kind of going back to the other question uh with building my own world and and trying to create something original where especially after now knowing how long it, it took me to do this i i feel like if i'm going to put you know this much time into something else it would be it would be really cool if i can if i can do something original um but my uh my talents unfortunately are definitely not in in the writing realm per se i i feel much more comfortable bringing a vision to life than i than i have uh you know right writing the story from scratch so uh, that's i feel like where where the hold up might be behind that but uh we'll we'll, we'll see what happens I, i'm would love if there's any writers out there that that are amazing please uh reach out to me if you got some cool ideas i yeah especially when it comes to working with writers like i, I love i i just love collaborating and uh yeah working with other people and as you can see with the music videos like that I actually music videos are kind of how I started in the film world and uh and that collaborative process like I I just love it and just being able to to do something yeah just something that is building upon something with somebody else and it's not just like trust me this is my vision it's like we're doing this together and this is this is our thing let's 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 make it happen I, I I'm I'm much more comfortable in that environment <laughs> Yeah, I feel that. I now I understand why you said like specific <laughs> because I mean that I mean that's like a really that's a great way to work though. Um it's uh you're 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 living in the moment and exploring uh you know what the possibilities are and changing course as needed when you you know act like are doing like a real collaboration. So I mean that's more fun and I think creates more room for building something unique too. You know? Yeah, I mean, in, the episode five might have been out already if, you know, the Less Than Jake video didn't happen and the Arrows in Action video didn't happen. But like, you know, when I started Pixel Art, again, this was the goal. And I, I never, never imagined I'd be getting called from Less Than Jake to make a Pixel video. And when that happened, I was like, yeah, I guess Han Solo can wait. <laughs> we're going we're gonna to put this to the side for a little bit. Did they contact you because of the Han Solo work? That was how... No, they actually they contacted me from the music video that I did right before. Um, they, uh, one of the band members was friends with one of the band members in the band that I did uh, the music video before I was in action. Uh, and then I got that actually somehow through Han Solo one way or another. Uh, my buddy, John Stratman, who's another amazing pixel artist, uh, he recommended me actually for, for the gig. Um, so thank you so much, John. Um, and yeah, so and and I met him through releasing Han Solo, and, and that's all been social media. He like reached out very quickly and was just like, you know, I, I like what you're doing, and we we've, we've hit it off and, and been pretty cool since. That's super cool, and it looks like the response has been really good 
on these videos. Or, I mean, everybody loves Star Wars. <laughs> How can you not? I mean, like, I I don't know a lot about it, but I, I, you know, have a special place in my heart for the Star Wars series as a kid, you know. Um, so I just, I would imagine that, you know, and pixel art too is just something that I think there's like a, obviously the people in this community, there's like this faction of people that are just like, I'm just such a mark for pixel art. Like it could be anything. And <laughs> just like, it's just so, I don't know. There's something about it. I don't know if it's the nostalgia of, of all of our eight bit games, if you're an eighties kid, but it's delightful to me. <laughs> Well, I think it's cool, and I, think, I feel like it is starting to be appreciated more throughout, like you know, the last couple of years, especially with with how explosive like indie games are. Is that pixel art is it's an art style, and it, it's not it's not a, a a result of limitations per se. It's it's an option now, and it, it's it's just it's a style, and it's if you want to if you think that's the yeah. vehicle, it's just like any other illustrative style or style of animation. It's just like what what fits the story you're trying to tell um and i mean for me obviously as as i've said pixel art was it was kind of the only choice for me but there, there was something that I, I kind of knew like right away that like pixel art and star wars like this is going to be super cool and like if i'm not making it i would love to see it so like and that that's always a nice a nice gauge for me of if i should be doing this if like i do i need to see it would i would i want to see it if it came out and would i be mad i didn't do it first <laughs> That's a good gauge too. <laughs> Would I be mad if I didn't do this? It's a really good question to ask yourself. That's wise. Yeah. <laughs> um, so yeah, uh, Leandro is saying, Rob, we need to see some pixel chains from you. So as a, as a quick aside, um, for those who haven't seen the post yet, we are going to be starting a new series in our um, Discord server called um, PXC live art and um, we the the competition for this round has closed but we'll be announcing winners on Monday and we're selecting a few artists to um, have them come on and um, they'll build something from scratch using our pixel chain editor and um, pixel chain will pay for the gas fees for the minting fees and um, yeah, and you can watch live with with our community um, building a piece of pixel art. So um, that's our new thing, uh, and I'm I'm gonna spoil it for now. Obviously, Rob is going to be one of one of our featured artists in this new series, um, along with a couple of other very talented folks. So keep your ears to the ground for um, when that starts, because. Um, that's, I think I'm really looking forward to um, watching live art, uh, live pixel art, uh, especially using pixel chain too, because I've seen a lot of tutorials, you know, using Photoshop and stuff, but um, I think pixel chain is really cool because not everybody has Photoshop or other tools. And um, yeah, I don't know. I really like the community here too. Um, and there's something to be said for like, like there isn't a capability to copy and paste something that you've built in another program. You have to build it from scratch in Pixel Chain. And um, some people might think that that's a setback, but I think that there's something to be said for everybody to be using the exact same tools and having the exact same, you were saying, you know, pixels, pixel art used to be just a tool that we had to use because of that was what we were limited to with um, animation, or especially for video games, I mean. And now it's like, you're choosing to use this tool and um, it's the playing field is the same as everybody else. And it's really cool to see all the different things that people create with this template, basically. Yeah. Sorry, I went on for a little while about that, but. <laughs> I'm excited to jump on board and come <laughs> hang out with you guys and draw some, some pixel art. I was messing, I think I, I, I mentioned briefly when we spoke that uh, I've been messing around with, with the software a little bit. And, can't wait to, to dive in. So um, you had said that you're new to um, crypto art in the NFT space. So I'm curious, uh, as a new person, like what are what are some of the things that um, have stopped you from minting any art yet? Like uh, it's it's good for us to hear like how what things are challenging, um, so that you know developers and um, people like. Uh, 
the moderators in our community and the whale community, you know, have a better way of um, onboarding new folks. Yeah, totally. I mean, I, I feel like for 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 me, because um, I've been just looking into uh, just on how to mint things, and and that process seems like there's enough information to uh, to to figure it out. For me, it's more been from like the uh, the planning on on what to release, and and I guess what's the the, the best approach for that. Um, I, I feel like I'm kind of just it might be like old school. I'm, I'm like from this <clears throat> mindset where. The, the first time is kind of a big deal and like I don't want that to be spoiled and, and I want to make sure that I, I just did my research and I've, I've I you know made the right decision on what I want to release how I want to release it um where I want to release it so I feel like that's really uh that, that that's been the most difficult thing for me as far as just figuring out uh figuring out all all, all that stuff so more from like I feel like a conceptual end than the than the technical like how to post things Oh, well, that's good to hear that. Um, I think things have been getting a little easier, too. And even with the um, I mean, not, on Pixel Chain, you, you do have to pay to mint. But on like, um, you know, some of the biggest minting platforms like OpenSea, um, you, you only have to pay for um, gas fees for the first mint. And then after that, um, it, it's gasless um, transactions. But um, it's good to hear that um, you're not limited by the technical aspect of it, um, but it's just more of a like conceptual, like, hmm, how do I want to be seen? Um, what do I want my Genesis piece to be? Um, yeah, it's it's good. I think I you know a lot of artists sometimes they just like put stuff out there and don't think about it, but especially with um, the NFT space still being somewhat new, I think we're in like a second wave it seems like and you know i think it's important to think about um you know where you leave your first mark like with blockchain tech too it's like it's there forever you can't change what you did <laughs> <laughs> yeah trust me like if, if you know if you don't see me minting or the fact that i haven't minted yet it's not because i i'm not ready to do it i am going to sleep every night with some sense of fomo and some sense of you know i need i need to make this happen um, but and, and I feel like that speaks to just how how careful I am and considerate I am to uh, to what that that first <laughs> the first drop's gonna be. Mm, well, this is true. Someone did say you can burn it though. You you can burn your NFTs if you want to. There's that, but um, I don't think you'll need to do that. And I'm also thinking, you know, uh, I don't I don't know how soon you'll start with our series, but. Um, we would be honored if your first mint was on uh, through our Pixel Chain app. That would be kind of cool, especially because, um, yeah, I think our first round of. <laughs> Sorry, I got distracted by the ta the chat. Leandro said, "Don't burn the poor NFT." <laughs> That's funny. Um, uh, what was I going to say about Pixel Chain? Sorry, I just had a brain fart because there's like 80 screen, 80 windows on my screen, and I have brain problems so <laughs> today. But um, yeah, no, uh, it, we would be honored to have you um, mint your first NFT with us. But you know, I understand if if you need more time to consider um, how you want to put yourself out there. But um, yeah, we, I think when, when Rob, I'm sorry, Rob and I talked before this call a couple of days ago and I had mentioned it would be cool if we did like an improv kind of pixel art, you know, people just say, you know, a word or a concept and the, and the live artist just starts um, creating from there. Um, but obviously if you are selected as an, as an artist, you can create whatever you want. But I thought that would be kind of cool too. It's just create like co-creating something together and you don't know what it's going to be and you don't think about it too much and see what happens. I would be all about that. And I think we were calling it improv, improv pixel art or something, something along those lines where, yeah, I, I definitely, I would have so much fun just drawing whatever other people wanted to see that, uh, that'd be so cool for sure. And just put, uh, put some crazy ideas together or not crazy ideas, whatever ideas. Well, you already have a fan in Leandro. He said that he will buy your first NFT if he if he lets me buy it. <laughs> awesome! Thank you, man. That's so cool. Um, 
So what would you say of all the projects you've done um, in film, uh, like what has been the most um, rewarding for you? I, I feel like this might be a boring answer at this point, but it, I, I would be lying if it wasn't Han Solo, just because of of everything that stemmed from it. Um, I got into it <clears throat> to to make another film. I got it as a filmmaker and I was like, I'm going to make a series. It's going to be like, this is my goal. I want to tell a story and I'm going to keep doing this. Mm. And I just spent so, so much time div diving into the illustrative aspect and just becoming an artist and then just and, and I mean, aside from all that, just, as a filmmaker, like I've never blocked a scene with like what we're looking at with X amount of stormtroopers and X amount of actors. And it's just like I built I, 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 I grew so much as a as a filmmaker and as an artist through this project in so many ways um, and also just got got a lot of just awesome, uh, just a lot of really awesome, encouraging feedback um, that that really as an artist is, is great to hear, especially at, at this point in my career. Um, notably the, or like the first things that come to my mind with this series, uh, the artist, the comic book artist, Mark Brooks, he's been super supportive since we've released this. And he, he posted the first episode and he's reached out and we've, we've had conversations and he's really just seems impressed and seems super into what we're doing. So like to have his blessing was, was really cool. And uh, and the the author of the comic book series, uh, Marjorie Liu, she's also reached out. Um, she's posted it, and then she reached out via email a couple of weeks ago, and again just kind of shared her her thoughts and just it was just super encouraging. And and yeah, it's just been like this project has just st like so much has stemmed from it, um, including this conversation we're having right now. Like this 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 wasn't from me being a filmmaker but i'm not not a filmmaker now and it's just like this this led to me again just like like figuring out who i am and uh and realizing that like the the fluidity i guess of, of what being an artist is and and not not putting myself in a box or trying to find a box to put in or to be put in kind of thing so han solo is definitely definitely cool and, and the scale of it was is just so massive um just how many actors i had to work with or, or i had the pleasure of working with it was, it was amazing um and and the amount of lines that we had to record i mean han solo was like at least five days of like eight hours a day i want to say recording lines um like the character of han solo the, all of the characters was much longer than that um and and yeah and then obviously just how long it's taking in general to put out um, I'd made a feature film uh, a couple of years ago, and that was my longest project at the time. That took about a year, year and a half from, you know, writing to shooting to getting distribution and all in all, like a year and a half learned a lot. And, and Han Solo just trumps that in, in every aspect. Yeah, it's a, animation is a huge undertaking. I think people who are not, um, what's the word, who are not indoctrinated into that world at all, have no idea. Like, I, th I think it's much more complicated than live action film, at least in my mind, as a non filmmaker, I can see why there's just a lot more work to do, a lot more labor involved. Yeah, yeah, which makes I, me really appreciate it. <laughs> yeah, I didn't see here, which I like, I, I love about it. And I feel like I gravitated towards that. Because um, like one thing, coming from film school and, and, and working in the independent film industry, I've worked with a lot of people that were very, uh, very ready to quickly relieve responsibilities and to act like it's not their responsibility and that I don't have to know this because somebody else knows this. And, and I always, I, I always wanted to be a director. I always uh, liked producing my own films. And I always just for that reason, wanted to at least understand everything roughly. Um, or you know, not roughly, like, get a good understanding of everything. And uh, from lighting to costume design, you know, production design, cinematography, just every aspect of it, which I, I always wanted to do t for the benefit of my films and, and filmmaking. And then when I'm making an animation, it's just like, uh, you, the, I, I don't, I can't just push the responsibility on somebody else and be like, oh, there's there's live actors in this room if i just you know say figure it out they'll come up with something really cool these pixel things are not going to move they're not going to do anything so <laughs> i need to 
figure out where they're standing, where they're going to move, when they're going to move there, how how bright the light is on them, what, what ever, everything. And, and I love that. Um, but obviously that all goes into how long it takes and yeah. how excited I will be when I am fortunate to work with other animators and illustrators uh, and uh, expand, expand <laughs> yeah. the team a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. I, I can't imagine how many hours you're spending on all of that. I mean, like you said, it's, you know, the costume designer, the lighting design, the, um, the animator, the storyboard artist, you know, it's everything in one, <laughs> one person. Um, but it sounds like with this project, you know, all those things that you said you were interested in, like now they're overlapping and you're getting an opportunity to, um, you know, play with those things um, and have, you know, the creative license to do it how you want to do it too. Yeah. Absolutely. It's, it's like a perfect example of following your, like what you love, like you love Star Wars, you love pixel art and you love all the technical aspects of filmmaking um, and creative aspects of it. It sounds like this is um, a really cool project for you. I'm really excited to see what you do next. Um, do you have anything uh, that you, we're already almost at the hour mark? Um, I don't know how every time I do these, I'm like, how the hell does the hour pass so fast? And in other areas of my life, it feels like forever sometimes. Um, but uh, do you have any, um, upcoming projects or things that we ought to know about uh, that you want us to know right now? <laughs> um, I would say uh, just on, you know, on the coming up list are our console episode five and and my NFT, um, my NFT drop whenever whenever I decide to do that. I, I'd say those are really the things to look out for. Um, right now, I'm really uh, uh, in addition to gathering information, I've just been just making all different kinds of pieces and like i was saying before like this the introduction to the space is like just jolted my creativity and i've just been making all kinds of just weird stuff and not caring about fitting in an, you know a certain type of pixel so style good. more than ever um so i'm really just enjoying this little creative wave i'm in and uh i'd say look out for the nfts and uh hansel episode five and, and follow me on I me mean, on on my social medias because I just yeah I'm gonna put up on little stuff. Let me drop that in the chat again. And also, um, there was one more question that I missed um, from from our um, chat. I think it was from Lang. I'm sorry. Let me write. Rob Levy. Um, I thought this was a good question. I don't want to forget it. Um, they asked, what is the biggest surprise in animating pixel art that you wouldn't have anticipated before you ga began making pixel art? Uh, biggest surprise in animating pixel art? Um, I guess... I gotta think about this. It's a, it's a good question. Um, I guess in the similarities um, between the, the pixel art and animation, and that could just be because of me and, and the direction I decided to go in, where um, where I was able to 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 learn the techniques of animation, and that all applied to the pixel art. Like it was like whether it's you know how to move a hand or how to make someone look like they're jumping, and the the you know anything technically speaking that. I've applied to the pixel art and that I feel like is working is, is all really from traditional uh, animation. So that that was all like really cool to to learn that just like these basic these basic pillars are are timeless and they are you know they can be applicable to to really anything uh, in this kind of space. Um, so yeah, and then I guess the other thing was how uh, I, I don't want to say dyslexic necessarily, but how much it would mess with my eyes and. Uh, I, I don't see things for months and then like one day I'll look at something and be like, oh my God, wh what is that pixel doing there? That shouldn't be that color. Like, um, so yeah, that, that's also, <laughs> that was surprising <laughs> and it is always surprising. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, yeah, sorry, it started to go to somebody else's channel there. Um, but yeah, uh, it sounds like this this new episode so just to recap the the finale of Han Solo the Dragon Void run will be in 
this summer, hopefully. Yes. Hopefully. <laughs> I mean, that's amazing for a passion project that, you know, it actually was done within the year. So I think that's really great. You know, like I saw, I saw the end credit saying like, this is a not for profit um, fan project. Like that's a lot of labor to do um, just all for the love of it. So, and we're glad you did it. Um, obviously everybody in the chat loves it. And um, yeah, really thank you for being here and um, everybody stay tuned. We're gonna see some more of Rob soon here in the Pixel Chain Discord, of course. Um, he's definitely one of our featured artists. I'm already spoiling one, one of the featured artists that we'll be announcing on Monday. And um, yeah, I can't hold it in cause like we're just too excited to have you. Um, your work is really awesome and um, yeah, we're really excited to have you in the community now. So thanks. <laughs> thank you so much. Yeah, thank you for everything. And and I've already, I feel a very warm welcome from this community and uh, I, I really can't appreciate that enough. So I'm looking forward to everything. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. And thank you everybody in the chat for your presence and your really great questions as always. And um, we'll see you next time. Bye.